He froze it for now. <clears throat> yeah, for now. Okay, now it's time to start running. Okay, yes, run. <laughs> Dude, run! Three, two, one. Come on. Oh god. Rise me! <laughs> nice. God damn. Yeah, that's not gonna hold. Find Nibulet. <laughs> Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Oh man. We're the last line of defense. Last line of defense, eh? Check out G2A.com for the best deals in games, peripherals, and also gift cards, and more. Check out the link in the video description. Also, if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you guys can get notified on my latest videos. What up guys, this is Wild One and welcome back here to my YouTube channel. Tunnel. And we are now finally back Generally here once speaking, again to Genshin Impact. So anyways, we are now um, going to the freaking Forbidden Zone. So yeah, we are just continuing on what we have literally just everything? left in the last one. Well, I... <clears throat> Paimon wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them. Well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Yeah, um, I'm guessing there, there is some kind of weird uh, power going on down there, or is it supposed to be the Gnosis, which uh, the freaking um, Fatuis are after? Yeah, probably it's the Gnosis, maybe. Okie dokie. So yeah, anyways, we are now finally back here once again to Cataclysm Awakening. I believe this is the last final part of the quest. So yeah, let us finish this right here. Huh. So there's a switch on the side. Stand back. Very convenient. Yo, there's a lot of mechanisms in this place. Yo, a lot of doors. <laughs> okay, Whoa. yeah, they are yeah, hiding something here. Room. Um, what's that in the middle of the room? Come on, have a look. Oh, us? Okay. Why is it called as the Forbidden Zone? Um, yeah, nothing here. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it, but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely oh? because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally, I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Yeah, water pressure. Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. What about the freaking primordial water the then? Pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the Primordial Sea. I began to make yeah, a few the preparations primordial based on sea. that hypothesis. What about that? Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that and the symptoms that Fremene displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of Primordial Seawater in the seawater nearby. Okay, dokie, so that's it. Primordial Seawater? But we're already under the and that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. 
um, is continually leaking into the sea. Yes. Yeah, where the hell did that That's come from then? But forget about the two of us. Not even Novalette mm -hmm. knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find a plug of leak. Oh. Oh! Seems uh, like what? you figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues... Yo, this is the source? Soon, it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. If the gate falls, all the fontaine will fall with it. Yeah, oh yes, you know the that's legend um the legend. If this place that, falls, then everyone in Fontaine uh, will turn told us. in the span of a night. But that's just too mm. weird. Why would the fortress of Meripede be built right mm. above a sluice gate for the primordial sea? Who built this place anyway? Your expression mm. tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest. You might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's oh. no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to God repent damn. and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them and said, You may go guard my secret deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles and increased, we got what we have more right and more now. people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, Damn. researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. It's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. Do you believe in prophecies? To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Damn. Just like um during Linus' performance of people turning into water. So as the Duke of Merapi, just what do you plan to do Let's about it? Where else? I want to show you something. How kid doki. Yeah, I thought it's going to be a lot more serious, but okay. Um, I mean, this is, this is serious, but still. Your grace, perfect. It's only primordial seawater. Wait, 
Jurier, he's not alone. Huh? Lorveen and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? Yeah, we're trustworthy. The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin. Edu? He's the one who blew the whole institute sky high. Everyone knew he was a bit crooked in the head, but you're not alone. What do you mean so by blew the whole institute sky high? Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the fortress of Merope? <sighs> oh, man. Lovely idea. <laughs> I'm already imagining it in my head. Wait, literally yeah, blow it I'm up. Tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> That taskmaster over there is Miss Lorveen, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? <laughs> Was that really necessary? See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just <laughs> using your work as a convenient cover? Oh, man. Five months? Your grace, oh, I man. am not in a relationship with this man. <laughs> <laughs> if I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Uh, oh, oh man. I said anything then. Me. Yo, the ship is strong. The ship is strong. <laughs> There's another door that goes right up. Yeah, we blame Paimon for uh, that um, situation. Like fortress can do anything. <laughs> okay. Is this just a normal room? Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. Hey, yo. What? This is... What a huge... ship? This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I... Very little. Not much at all. <laughs> Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria, and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in the story too? Damn. Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the Primordial Sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Can't you share your plan with everyone? The workers to find out the truth behind this ship. Riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. Hope you do. Oh, a lot of things are now going on. Are we going to share it with Linny though? That's the question. <laughs> because, okay, it seems like this is now getting serious. 
I'll leave you here for now. The main question is, why is the primordial oh, seawater rising? Thank you so That much. is the best question no here. Worries. But don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. It means that my actions will now decide the next steps Lini's group take. In other words, if I want to tell Lini the truth, I must make him understand we cannot afford excessive conflict yeah, right now. We'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. Great. We will. I look forward to what happens next. Okay. Uh, things are getting serious. Return to the infirmary. Okay, Doki. <clears throat> How is Fermanade doing? We're back. Hey, yo, they look Welcome fine. Back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley? Always drinking tea. <laughs> huh. Oh man. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishwin. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. <laughs> I really can't oh, make man. sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon. Were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, a whole ton. Yeah, he explained everything. Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Um... Dinny sounds a lot more like his old self. Yeah, I <laughs> took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So, let's just talk here. All right. Then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. That is correct. That is very, very correct. Whoa, he's good. He got that right on the first try. That's yeah, that really is correct. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father <coughs> can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary. Oh, man. I just can't think of what it could be. Yeah, it doesn't know about the giant ship, but still. <laughs> this grass of the big picture is amazing. Yeah, super smart. <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now yeah, is that the giant ship, probably man. has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. Yep. He has a bargain. He got it. And it could be important enough for Father <clears throat> to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. Okay, after some deliberation, you shared the information you just learned. Okay. Here you go. I can't believe it. The sea will engulf everyone. Just 
just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. Bam! The Let's two of go! You already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Let's go. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Uh, don't mention it. <laughs> hey, Paimon's hungry. What was that? Paimon's <laughs> hungry. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> You've done so much already. Go get some food. All right, then we'll catch you guys another time. Okie dokie. Things are going well so far. Okay, let's just teleport to the freaking cafeteria right here. Okie dokie. Man, um... I wish that we can literally just teleport right here, but yeah. Uh, seems like there's no teleporters nearby. All right, time to have a meal. That's surprising. Um, can we choose? Yeah, we can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Let's go. <laughs> then I'll have the uh, biggest portion you have to offer. Don't forget <laughs> Yo, look at that no face. Problem. Just leave it to me. <sighs> all right. See, Juin also bring some drinks over to you. All right, let's go. Ah, so delicious. A free dinners are the absolute Is best. Is this how it feels to be freeloaders? <laughs> Wait a second, we did do plenty of work after all. Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. Exquisite, thank you. on your face just now but the muscle here just moved which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment <coughs> Sijuin, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings probably both <sighs> a bit of both i suppose yep i'm a melazine which means i'm very different from human beings i must know what you're thinking if i want to take good care of you you're really good at taking care of people even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. <laughs> yeah, you really have to you're call her short. An older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office when you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. <laughs> I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. 
They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Clarand had returned. Oh, and I oh. was keeping an eye on Mr. Linney as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often too. I feel like he'd like it here, <laughs> with all the darkness and chaos. Yeah, I don't think he he'll he'll like it here. <laughs> it's hard to imagine a villain outside of his office. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Okay, Doki. Um, hey, yo, we have to return um back up there. Okay, I'm guessing sooner or later we'll actually see Arechino now. If that's how you pronounce her name, yeah, I do not even know how to pronounce that correctly though. But yeah, I am sure um in the next few parts of this we will be yeah, seeing her. So much has happened. <clears throat> feels absolutely exhausted now that she's finally relaxed. <sighs> Paimon's super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? I'm also getting there. <sighs> oh, immediately? <sighs> hey, yo! She really is sleeping! <laughs> That's the first time we see that. She immediately fall fell asleep. Okay, time for us to fall asleep as well. Delicious. <laughs> wow. Seconds for free. Yo, this is um very, very wholesome. Out of my way. Get out of my way. Hey yo. What happened? Why is everyone running? Uh something must have happened. Stop asking. What? Uh -huh. Who's yelling? Paimon still wants to sleep. Yes, yeah, something's going down. Paimon, wake up. We need to go out and see what's going on. Yo, why the hell is everyone panicking? Hey, yo, we have alarms going on. What? Um, dude. Yo, there are alarms. No time to explain, mate. Goodbye. Okay. What's wrong with these people? Yo, did the thing just burst? Is the primordial water going up now? Oh, thank goodness. Um. Yeah, the hell is going on? Especially to inform you, something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Oh I've no! Saying, you two are new here, and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. Um, you said this grace said evacuate yeah, outwards? Yeah, as far away as possible. Upwards and outwards. Oh, no. Yo, the gate burst. Yeah, the gate might, might have um, burst open. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It can't be that thing! Oh, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke. You two just go and get out. Oh. Go without us. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. just go. Be careful. <clears throat> yeah, be careful as well. Yo. Um, 
Yeah, um... Alrighty. Yo, we're going down now? Yeah, we're definitely going down. Come on. <clears throat> Dude. They're here. Just like I said. Ayo. Oh, brother. You're just in time. But be ready to run. Ah, uh, no. God damn. Yep, it burst opened. Yo, get away from that. You'll turn into water. Oh, man. Okay, he froze it. He froze it for now. <clears throat> yeah, for now. Okay, now it's time to start running. Okay, yes, run. <laughs> Good, run. Three, two, one. Come on. Oh, God. Rice Nice. God damn. Yeah, that's not gonna hold. Find Nebulet. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Oh man. We're the last line of defense. Last line of defense, eh? The gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. God damn. God damn. Rah! Okay, yeah. Things just got way too serious right here. <clears throat> Holy moly. Okay. Uh, just in Traveler, time. I need you to get <clears throat> to the opera house immediately. Farina what, will why? soon be meeting with the knave there. You must protect Farina and make sure she doesn't spend too much time what? alone with her. Um, uh, you can explain everything else to me later. Do. You have my sincerest Wait. gratitude. He knows what's going on down there. Um, yeah, he probably knows what's uh, happening um, down there right now. Okay, we are teleporting. Okay, we have some kind of calm before the storm music going on. There are a ton of Batili and Palais Marmonia people over there. The knave is probably here already. We need to hurry. Yeah, I better are you go two now. Are traveler in Paimon? Monsieur Nervalet has left instructions. Please follow me. Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation, unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. Um... Okay, what, what do you mean protect? Uh, don't tell me she's gonna fight. Yeah, I'll do my best. Um... We can only do what we can do, I guess. Hey, yo. Why does she need our protection, though? Oh, the hell? So you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course. How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave, one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. I am. So there's the Knave. Ah, uh, pleasure to meet I've you too. I've prepared seats for you. Come, sit beside me. 
Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? Um, seems friendly enough, eh? Yeah, just be cautious. Just be cautious. Yeah, she doesn't look easy Emily, to deal with. What do you think of this cake? Um, it's quite tasty and I think Paimon agrees too. That's good to hear. So what child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. Wait, child? Oh, man. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Yeah, he'll Keeps be fine. That he's an excellent swimmer. I have faith in his uh, abilities. Since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked certainly pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very nervous. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh, so you're also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Muvillet right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillet. Yeah, I managed to find a few leads on his whereabouts. Hmm. Coming <clears throat> from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh, oh man, she's terrified. No she's terrified. I know for sure that Child is still alive. <laughs> oh, and just how do you know that? Because, uh, <clears throat> because we found evidence that proved he left the fortress of Mirapid. More or less, he escaped. After leaving the fortress. Yeah, that's what we do not know. <clears throat> yep, she left us in the, in the wide open. The fortress of Mirapid lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? Uh, we do not. But there was also no evidence that he's been injured or killed. Oh, that's good news, at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too his long sister? ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear oh, Tonya, no. Your letter made me feel like we <laughs> no were still enjoying letter. our time in Snezhnaya together. <clears throat> I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the opera house. Is it something like that? Yeah, I'm not even so sure if he'll write like that. <clears throat> ah, nah. That sounds good to me, All yes. letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. Uh, huh? <sighs> um, what? Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. <sighs> Yo, I the primordial this sea. This is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <sighs> oh, man. Yo. It's suddenly quiet. Hey, yo, Nouvellet. My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How? 
What you gonna do, Nuvalet? So you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. Oh boy. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows? <laughs> Maybe it's just your <laughs> sense of responsibility. Oh, man. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh my gosh. Here you go. God damn. Dude. That looks so cool. Holy. The day may come God when damn. the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth. But it is not this day. Oh man! This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. God damn! Yeah, go back to where you came. Oh man! Forgive me for overruling it. God damn! Nouvellet! Holy! Yo, that was so cool. I actually forgot that he's actually a dragon. So... Yeah, uh, I guess that's um the power of a freaking water dragon or a hydro dragon. Like, god damn. <laughs> All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> for now. Indeed. But only for now. I win this bet. You owe me a present. <laughs> well, oh, man. Well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearances' sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you Jeez. have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? <laughs> <laughs> he always oh, has tons man. of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? <laughs> Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <sighs> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Mermonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. Yeah, hopefully. God damn. So that was the vibration. I must say, we've spent long enough playing <coughs> house. Miss Felina, <coughs> as the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say... That's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? Oh at this boy. Point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet. Here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avoid I mean, the disaster or save correct. their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Heart have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you... 
It God damn. Believe just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures. I am not alone. Alone in my doubts, you know. God damn. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways. And I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me. God Fontaine damn. will be saved. <clears throat> even, even if I still cannot see the true future right now, as long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high. Yo, that's some freaking confidence right there. <clears throat> Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it, and what is it doing to help? I... Ah, man. <laughs> oh, boy. She deflated My like a pop balloon. are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh... An emergency response plan? Oh, God damn. look in your eyes. <clears throat> Have you not even prepared one of those? The, the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. <laughs> then allow me to jump. Oh, you. man. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique Denelise Cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnitium that has accumulated over the years? The Oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Oh, no. So you also have no idea. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnitium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Udex Nouvellette is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Oh, no. Please keep it a secret. Um, she is playing into her hands oh, right no. now. I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Udex by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please help yourselves, everyone. Oh man. <clears throat> I don't know what Nuvelet tasks was. Yeah, whatever his task is already done. Do not do not worry about it. He has literally sealed it the freaking primordial seawater. Traveler? I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank 
Thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. <coughs> oh, Paimon's super full. That cake was great. <laughs> if it's on There's my tea table, it must be. They're just enjoying quality. some cake now. <laughs> yes, and forgetting about the serious the situation. We're bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table, and I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. Yeah. We'll end it here. Well, as well as well. We could use the opportunity to discuss child before I must be on my way. Of course. Hi, coming to you. Okay, let's chat with the knave real quick. Alrighty. Yeah, what does she even have to chat about? <clears throat> I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's what Paimon thought! Oh, uh, what do you want to say? You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth, as their father. I would like to express my gratitude. There is no need. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say? All? Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings. Oh, come on. And informal topics in informal settings. Really now? I know you just returned That's from it? the fortress of Meripede. Yep. Relax. I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Linny. You mean Rithesley. <clears throat> He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Linny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others, including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? <laughs> oh, man. You Not very good. Our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty <coughs> and immediately transported to the fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I... <laughs> I... Oh, man. Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! <laughs> Oh man, that's so cute. <laughs> I have to admit. You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant. Oh, brother. My just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. Hey, yo. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. Oh, it's man. Just as I guessed in the second before I struck, the Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? And, and what are you trying to do? Please don't kill me. I'm begging you. Please. <laughs> oh, oh, man. She doesn't seem like an Arbon. 
So perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. Yeah, she doesn't look like an Archon. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Farina dares not mention this incident to anyone. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Farina quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep. No wonder night, she's so afraid of the name. Bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Udex Nuvillette is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvillette hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, father. God damn. My dear children, please speak. News from the fortress of Meripede. Master, Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the <laughs> handiwork of that ride sleeve. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Udex Nuvillette. Oh, and I have an additional mission. For you three. Yep, and that is to literally go into the fortress. Yes, father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Udex Nuvillette. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. You should know the rest. Linny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. Y you attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. I have now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon. But now, that doesn't seem right to me either. How do you come to that conclusion? I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nuvillette or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land. <laughs> Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve. And as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure hey, yo, we will work is here. together someday. Uh, Nouvellet? <laughs> he certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Oh, man. <laughs> Nouvellet, is it over? For now, yes. 
but this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesied events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. May we ask what happened down there? To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. And for what happened on our side... Yep. <laughs> Just say what happened. Hmm. So as expected, Vinave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Can I ask you some questions? Permission granted. <clears throat> um, does this mean you have the deeper connection with the Hydro Archon? Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. <laughs> oh man, spread by the knave. Can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. What did you sense in the Fortress of Merpid? I believe so. The Fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. Hmm. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? Cl clear skies only filled with dark clouds. Oh, man. Just moments before, Nouvellet has just mentioned the sense of grief. Thinking back to the legend, what Remedy said, it said that the dragon of water resided Fontaine. Okay, wait, Nouvellet, you can't be. You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? Yeah, he's the dragon of a uh, sovereign of water. The <clears throat> dragon? Yeah, I already know that thanks to um, freaking Reddit. So but that's so far as I know about Nouvellet. That's it. <laughs> Farina? Nouvellet! Oh, Nouvellet, man. are you listening? Ah, my apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... You guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. Well, that There's explains how strong he is. Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you were able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living dragon sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are stolen seven power? elemental Archons and seven matching Dragon Sovereigns. The Dragon Sovereign of Water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have it's some not urgent powerful matters enough, to attend I guess. to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. Uh, see you later, Nouvellet. We'll another time. <clears throat> Take care. Well, that was something. God damn. 
Okay, so yeah, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. We have already consumed way too much time. Uh, it seems like we're not yet done with Act 4. <laughs> I actually thought that we'll be able to finish Act 4 in this one single video, but it seems not. But yeah, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, guys, have enjoyed. Make sure to um, leave a like and subscribe and also... Um, please do leave a comment down there below. What do you guys think about the freaking prophecy? And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.